everyone! Assalamualaikum and how are you guys doing? So it's been so long ever since I actually posted something for you guys and <clears throat> deciding to record something today actually I sakit gigi hari ni so I was like really in pain and I thought like okay I, I tak boleh nak duduk diam-diam dekat rumah sekarang and just not do anything I do also have like a throat infection uh, and also a wisdom teeth is coming out like on my right side right now so it's really really painful but sempurna halloween this week or yeah this yeah this past week uh sasa decide untuk ceritakan kepada you all satu story yang sangat menyeramkan ya um, something yang i personally experience yang tak boleh nak dilupakan dan juga akan kekal selama-lamanya with me the story that i decided to tell you guys is a story yang I experience masa pergi gunung ledang. Okay, there was this time masa I dekat sekolah dulu. Um, our school had this like trip, and uh, we decided to go to gunung ledang. And um, nak mendaki gunung ledang ni takes around seven hours mendaki and seven hours nak turun bawah. So you can imagine it's extremely long, 14, 14 hours in total. Masa kita sampai dekat gunung ledang tu. Um, Kita punya, you know, kita punya teacher and everyone, they told us, jangan simply, you know, cakap benda-benda yang bukan because in this area, it's really, really dangerous and uh, ada demi history itself yang kita tak boleh nak simply uh, mulut celupa. So, uh, we arrived at Gunung Ledang. We, you know, we and uh, we were unpacking our things in the chalet. So, dekat dalam chalet ni ada... In one chalet could fit like four people and it's like just a small uh how to say around maybe i think like one square feet is that even right i don't know not even that big it's really really small so we fitted like four people max and that a little bit of like one bed for four people and um we had like a three-day trip so the second day was actually the day yang kita mendaki gunung ledang itself Dalam hutan ni banyak yang berlaku kan And then kita tak boleh nak simply cakap benda-benda yang kita nak cakap So masa tengah mendaki tu I was in an international school So international school students you all tahu lah kan macam mana Mereka tak faham sangat what is the, the consequences of saying bad things Yang you're not supposed to be saying We woke up around you know at around 6 a.m. in the morning and then kita siap-siap and bertolak dalam pukul 7 pagi so our aim was like okay pukul 7 pagi kita bertolak um, 7 pagi tu lebih kurang 7 jam will be like okay kita mungkin akan sampai dalam pukul 2 petang macam tu so we did kita bertolak pukul 7 and everyone was totally ready for this trip kan everyone was like super super excited and I was especially excited because I yang nak sangat pergi gunung ledang at that time because I wanted to see this this, you know, I wanted to feel macam mana dekat atas puncak Gunung Ledang ni sendiri because puncak Gunung Ledang is like a very historical mountain in uh, Malaysia itself that, you know, that has like a lot of history and a lot, a lot of uh, legendary stories kan. Meanwhile, masa kita sebenarnya pergi waktu tu, uh, I had like a, you know, like a spotlight headband that I was wearing and I also had like uh, another torchlight with me and also my phone because you know phone pun boleh guna sebagai torchlight right during that time i tak fikir banyak because i i did not have any spare batteries to bring with me i only had like you know two sandwiches and some you know a bottle sorry a bottle of water and pretty much nothing else baju extra pun i tak bawa because i was like thinking okay seven hours up and seven hours down is not that much right so the hike up was okay at first it started off like okay santai santai je we were like right in the middle where putri gunung ledang ada you know there's like a waterfall for putri gunung ledang yang she used to mandi dekat situ and we stopped there but uh because our team pun macam slow sikit nak berjalan so we didn't have much time we didn't even swim gunung ledang i can tell you is really really one of the most i think one of the most adventurous yet one of the most hardest trek to really hike up and 
I didn't know what I was expecting because I was like, oh, this is gonna be like a regular hike. Oh, best new again. We were like hiking out and everything. But then, as we were hiking, we were like 20 people. Tiba-tiba, you know, the, the guy yang guide kita, he was like, okay guys, kita dah sampai almost like three quarters of the way. Kita dah nak sampai. And he was like, at this point, ada certain orang yang dah tak larat, you guys can turun bawah. Ten people decided to go back down because ada yang kena asma, ada yang kata, uh, okay lah, dah terlalu penat, dah tak, tak mampu nak naik, nak panjat lagi. So, uh, I was like, no, I'm not going to give up. No, I'm going to make it to the puncak. I felt at first when kita dah naik gunung tu, like at that part, I was like feeling a little weird because the only situation was like I was facing too much of greens, you know, I was facing too much of poko dengan everything was green. I couldn't basically see it. Langit semua ada tak boleh nampak. The trees were surrounding us, right? So you're surrounded by greens. You're surrounded by everything that is green. Like green is good, not that much. So. My emotions dah macam main-main dengan I dah macam uh, You nak lagi ke? You still nak nak move on ke? Kan? It's like saya dah ignore the feeling Okay Then I was with two of my friends Omar dengan Yogesh Like all three of us were like hiking up together And we were feeling really tired I couldn't breathe properly because the environment and the air was so thin You rasa you macam dah tak boleh nak fikir sangat we were walking, I tengah-tengah in between them, feeling so nauseous right now. I rasa macam nak pitam because the oxygen level was so low. So I was like, okay, I just need to rest for a moment. You know, just like this. Few seconds. And all of a sudden, my friends, they disappeared. And I was like, hey, Yokish, oh my, korang kat mana? Macam tengah cuba panggil, but the voices didn't really reach out. You shout macam mana pun, dia tak melantung keluar, you know? And I was just like, okay, tak apa. Just take a break. I was just sitting down and I tak apa-apa. I didn't think much. And then tiba-tiba, I saw this old lady that comes out of nowhere. Tiba-tiba keluar from the woods. Like literally walking. Like she's super super small with a stick in her hand. And I tak nampak muka dia pun because I rasa memang I tak nak tengok muka dia pun waktu tu. She was just walking in front of me. And apa yang I mampu cakap during that time was like, Ya Allah, nak naki gunung ni kan dengan niat yang baik. Tak ada niat nak ganggu sesiapa pun. All of a sudden, she just disappeared. And then, tiba-tiba, after I dah baca doa, my friends appeared again in front of me. And they were like, Eh, Saida, Saida, you pergi mana? I was like, what? Korang pergi mana? I was like, I was like here. I tak gerak pun. And they were like, yeah, we were also here. That was like a strange moment. Okay, then we were hiking up and kita dah sampai dekat puncak gunung pun. Uh, we spent like 20 minutes up there and then kita tepat sekena turun. So when we were on our way going down, I think like 8 people, all of them dah lari turun bawah. I was left with my friend Omar and uh, Basically, before I nak turun, I was having like some rashes dekat teka I. I was just like tengah sapu cream and everything. He stayed with me then. We had like the guys who guided us were in front and at the back. Tapi, we didn't see them anymore. So I was like, Omar, you tahu tak mereka pergi mana kan? They were like in front of us, tiba-tiba dah hilang kan? So I was like, okay, there's something not right here. We were both alone. And it felt like tak ada sesiapa lagi yang ada kat situ. So we were holding each other's hands because we were terrified. And while we were going down, makanan dah habis, kita punya air pun dah habis. And the worst thing was, I had to go to take a shishi. E, macam mana I nak ambil shishi, betul tak? I'm like with this guy alone in the hutan, kan? So it was like this crucial moment of really intensity. You know, being terrified. We were like so hungry and kita kehausan, no water, nothing to drink, nothing to eat. We were basically walking down, like fast walking because kita nak turun bawah cepat. And maghrib masa tu dalam pukul 7. Wow, kita separuh jalan pun tak sampai lagi, you know? This is not good. We should be reaching down actually by now. Tapi kenapa kita tak sampai-sampai lagi? And then, here comes the scary thing. It was that part when Maghrib dah masuk and you were literally stuck in a forest for that long for I think until then it was like already 14 hours. You cannot see the sky. You cannot hear anything. It was only me with my friend and we didn't have anything else. No service, no connection, tak boleh nak call, tak boleh nak apa pun. So, I dah jadi gila tau. And my friend was also macam-macam jadi gila. Where you really are in a situation where you tak boleh nak keluar. You you can't just like go out, you have to go down. 
kalau you tak turun means there's no escape for you so you're like just literally in that forest alone and you tak boleh buat apa-apa i was crying and i was like you know oh my i tak boleh buat lagi i cannot i cannot it was just too tough we had this mental breakdown for a few minutes and it was already dark uh, I, kita dah tak nampak apa-apa and guess what during that time lah kita punya torchlight dah tak ada lampu and everything tinggal lagi satu torchlight je which uh, was my headband and the headband you buy in color the torchlight is like this small so kita berdua were using that torchlight to sulo jalan kita and imagine by that time it was already almost coming to 8 me and Omar, we got into an argument. He saw the way going this way. Tapi, I nampak jalan tu going that way. And he was like, no, this is not the way out. This is the way out. I was like, no, this is the way out. And we were arguing and kita dah dengar macam-macam bunyi by that time. Like, perempuan ketawa, mengilai kan. And I'm orang yang sangat-sangat terrified. I was like, I don't like this. I don't like this at all. We were arguing. Like, betul-betul gaduh tu during that time. And then tiba-tiba, I was just like, you know what? Apa kata kita just diam je sekarang, nak cakap apa-apa because this thing is really making our minds going crazy. So, he was like, okay, I setuju, jom kita duduk diam-diam je kat sini. Okay. Then, tiba-tiba, there was this one guy passing by. One guy yang kita tak kenal pun, pakai baju jubah warna putih. And he just came out of this tree. And I think he was like trying to point us the way. You know how terrifying it is? You tak nampak apa-apa tau. Sekarang tengah gelap ni. You only have like one torchlight yang dah nak mati pun. That one torchlight pun you cuma boleh sulu on one specific way kan. It's not like you boleh sulu everything. He was just like pointing the way. Me and Omar like, okay. I was like, do you see that tree trunk? Yeah, I see it. Okay, good. That's the way. We were walking down. I terselio kaki during walking because uh, jalan ni memang teruk sangat and uh, it was so steep. Finally, we reached down and the first thing me and Omar did, of course, was we kissed the ground and we were saying like, Ya Allah, Alhamdulillah, syukur kita sampai juga dekat tanah ni kan. Everyone was having their barbecue. Everyone was eating. During that time, kita sampai waktu tengah pukul 8.40. Semua macam, Eh, hey, korang pergi mana, you know? And then, that's how it is. Other things happen as well during that night. Ada cikgu tu kena cakar dengan harimau yang gaib. Ada yang nampak pontianak masa tengah mandi. The moral of the story is, lain kali, you jaga you punya mulut kan. You jangan simply cakap benda-benda yang bukan-bukan. I mean, I did not. Tapi, you know, things can happen, kan? Don't lose your faith during that time because itulah masa yang uh, setan akan suka nak lemahkan kita beriman. Make sure you betul-betul baca doa Make sure you betul-betul niat you pergi sana untuk apa Those things exist so, so. That was basically a part of my story And I hope you guys enjoyed it I do have a lot more scarier stories that I would like to share with you But I guess this one is like a story of a torturing uh, experience If you guys want to watch more And kalau you rasa you suka I cakap dalam bahasa Melayu Telling you guys a story Then uh, don't forget to hit the like and subscribe button and also let me know what else you would like to see from my youtube channel okay guys thank you very much bye kita akan jumpa lagi bye